It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson, only on 610 CHTN. Hello, my name is Jared Schneider, and joining me for City Beat today is City Manager Gary Septelli. Good morning and welcome. Morning, Jared. Pleasure to be here. So before we get into any of the questions, I'll let you uh, go over some of the things from the past week, as well as anything that may be coming up here in the next little while. So I think uh, the one thing that I'd like to mention, I mean, obviously, is that uh, we have our public hearing for the financial plan tonight and at 7 o'clock at City Hall, and I uh, encourage people to come out and to see how Council has uh, identified sort of the uh, the number of projects uh, and capital projects that uh, they intend to undertake uh, in 2013. 204-677-8181. As we mentioned, we have City Manager Gary Sapatelli taking your calls today. 204-677-8181. And you mentioned the budget meeting tonight at City Hall. Maybe go over some of the things that will be taking place there. And what's the reason for having it here tonight? <clears throat> well, the reason is that, I mean, obviously that we're required through uh, legislation of the Municipal Act to, to have a, uh, a financial plan uh, public hearing uh, prior to the actual adoption of the levy bylaw. The levy bylaw uh, was introduced at Council uh, on the 15th for first reading. Uh, the intent is to have a public hearing as to uh, uh, listen to any concerns that uh, may come forward at that time and, and then really council has to uh, have the levy bylaw passed and presented to the province uh, by May 15th uh, every year. 204-677-8181. Now, who is invited to this meeting and what is the city looking to get out of this meeting here tonight? So really that uh, everybody's invited uh, uh, to, the, to the meeting tonight at, at City Hall uh, if they choose to attend. Uh, really it's, uh, it's a chance for Council to present their financial plan to the public and uh, answer any questions uh, uh, that may come forth uh, from the public in regards to how they intend to, uh, to undertake the 2013 budget. 204-677-8181. Now, how will this meeting affect us moving forward and affect the city moving forward? And what are some of the other things that maybe we should look forward to in the future after this meeting? Well, I, th I think what sort of uh, uh, will affect us as a community, really it sort of it lays out uh, sort of the the operating uh, guidelines for the city from uh, from a budget perspective, but also lays out the capital projects uh, and the number of projects that are uh, that the city is looking to undertake this year. Uh, you know, one of, one of the aspects right now is that we're we're currently in the process of uh, sending out a number of RFPs and and, uh, and tenders to undertake our capital projects uh, and mainly sort of some of the paving uh, projects that we're uh, wanting to sort of. Uh, 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 to sort of approve for this summer. So this is the opportunity for council to get that information out to the to the individual ratepayer, but also sort of to uh, answer any questions that they may have. Okay, and you mentioned some of the projects now. What are some of the highlights maybe from the budget that was released that was released just a little while ago? So, the, I mean, really is that the, the levy bylaw that was put it, uh, given first reading sort of sets out the uh, the mill rates as to sort of what the uh, the impact will be on, a, on an individual property owner. So the budget, the financial plan itself, will sort of lay out those details as to what those projects are. So there, there's a number of, there's a capital plan that'll be part of that, uh, at which I, I will identify sort of what those costs for those, uh, uh, those capital projects are and, and how we as a city uh, intend to move forward. So 204-677-8181, we're looking for your calls, 204-677-8181. Now, the reason Mayor Tim Johnson isn't in here today is because he's down in Winnipeg for a quick day trip. So maybe go over some of the things that he's down there for. I know he will be back here in town for the meeting tonight. Sure, and I mean, obviously, to express uh, regrets for the mayor not being here, but I mean, uh, in the process right now, and as we speak, I mean, he's attending a, a news conference uh, uh, in in Winnipeg with uh, with uh, with the city of Winnipeg and, and a number of the other uh, major uh, cities in in the province of Manitoba, and and really the intent is to uh, sort of seek additional sort of sources of funding uh, for municipalities to to deal with uh, infrastructure issues uh, that we as uh, a number of communities in this province and and Canada uh, face, and I think that. Uh, uh, the intent really is to sort of take a look at uh, the province of Manitoba through their their budget uh, release last week has identified sort of a, a one percent increase in, in the PST. Uh, so I think that part of the the lobbying efforts that will be undertaken by uh, by the number of the, uh, cities in this uh, municipality as to try to see if that money can be directed solely to address infrastructure issues uh, in in cities uh, across this province. Uh, one of the other asks as well is, I mean, obviously that uh, 
Currently, municipalities receive uh, a, a full exemption of GST from the federal government. <clears throat> and so we're looking at, I mean, obviously, is to uh, put the forth is that to see if the province will uh, take that into consideration from the PSD aspect. So uh, out of the news conference, I mean, obviously, there will be a, a letter that will be, uh, that's been drafted and signed by a number of mayors of, of the major communities in Manitoba going forth to the Premier Salinger. 204-677-8181. Now, I won't make you touch too much more on that. We'll make Tim, Mayor Tim Johnson touch on that when he comes back next week. We'll get into a little bit more on that. So now moving forward into Thompson here in the next little while, we also have the 2013 Spring Cleanup Project taking place throughout the month of May. So talk a little bit about that and what are some of the plans we have for that here in the spring and, and through the whole month of Sure, month of and May. just to sort of reiterate and sort of follow through on from last week, and, and really is that our spring kickoff uh, it will happen sort of May, May the 10th with the Corporate Challenge. Uh, and then sort of the, the community cleanup on the Saturday on, on the May 11th. Uh, in, the, in the community cleanup, I mean, obviously that there, uh, there's a, a bit of an incentive for, for residents to clean up uh, uh, financially as to sort of uh, the city sort of rebating $3 a bag. Uh, that's actually uh, in place for the, the entire month of May. Uh, you know, so I mean, uh, if for further details is to call our Public Works uh, office uh, to get more information if, if you need on it. But also is that, as well as that, is the, the entire sort of spring cleanup is uh, reopening an, a, a couple of um, services that have been offered uh, in the summer and past is really the compost site, uh, of which will sort of uh, be effective as of May the 4th, uh, and basically is a 24-hour operation. There's a, there's a few bins that are outside Public Works Yard, and uh, allows residents to sort of drop off uh, leaves and grass and, uh, of that thing in there, and uh, and really will continue for for the uh, uh, into the fall. Uh, and the other one is sort of the e-waste uh, program again, which has been offered a number of years uh, with the city, and that is uh, Saturdays uh, from eight to four. Uh, where uh, uh, residents of this community can drop off uh, used electronic equipment and, and really is uh, by undertaking a, a number of these recycling aspects is it really diverts uh, uh, a substantial amount of or volume of waste that goes into the waste disposal ground which so really is uh, we're uh, taking into consideration the environment but also uh, protecting sort of the, the longevity of the, uh, of the waste disposal ground. 204-677-8181. Now, what's the importance of having to clean up here once a year in the spring to get the city looking nice again and moving forward here into the summer? Well, I think it's just sort of, uh, you know, we've had a long winter and whatnot, and, uh, and in a lot of cases, I mean, I, I think residents get a, a bit of cabin fever being cooped up and whatnot, and I think here's an opportunity to sort of uh, come out and, uh, uh, you know, as, a, as the weather warms up and, and really sort of uh, have, uh, as a resident, an opportunity to do your part and and, uh, and hopefully making the the community of uh, of Thompson a, a lot better place to be and, and a lot cleaner 204-677-8181 now I know we talked a little bit about it last week because the city was holding a public workshop last Thursday to gather input into a secondary plan for the Yale Newman area now I know it was a week ago but what were some of the things that came out of that meeting so yeah and I mean this is sort of the the second uh, sort of workshop that's been been held as part of that process and really it was the intent for them. Uh, the, the initial one was uh, the stakeholders that uh, are involved in the Thompson Economic Diversification Working Group process that had an opportunity uh, to provide comment as to sort of how the Yale Newman area, which is uh, northeast of sort of uh, of the Yale uh, portion of, of the community, uh, comprises about an 85-acre parcel of land, and really to sort of get the input as to how, how does that plan or that area sort of develop overall uh, taken into uh, into consideration sort of some of the the principles and values that we as a community want to sort of see develop in that area so last Thursday was sort of the public's opportunity to uh, to be involved in that process and have their input so I think uh, uh, there was approximately uh, 20 25 individuals that were at that meeting and uh, were able to sort of provide the input uh, uh, to the uh, to the consultant that we have on there, and so the next step would be that consultant to sort of compile uh, all the sort of the the comments and thoughts that were th that have been presented, and to sort of come back with the uh, uh, a concept uh, of which we'll sort of continue through the process. Two zero four six seven seven eighty one eighty one. I know you wanted to touch a little bit about 
on this was the Volunteer of the Year Awards were on Monday night, so maybe I'll get you to talk a little bit about that and how that went and what were some of the things that went into that and how did that night go there on, on Monday? Sure, and I think, I mean, obviously the, the Volunteer of the Year Award is um, an, a, an annual event that we have. Uh, it was held on, on Monday at uh, on April the 22nd at the Thompson Regional Community Centre and I think, I mean, this year, I mean, obviously that uh, there were seven uh, individuals or uh, that were um, <coughs> that were nominated for uh, for the award. Uh, the the winner of this year's Volunteer of the uh, the year award was was Fred Palmer. Uh, Fred has been a you know a long time resident of uh, of the community and has been involved in in a variety of. Uh, 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 groups and initiatives uh, in his uh, in his tenure in this community, and, and most re recently, sort of through uh, Trail Breakers and, and the Wildlife Association. But he also has been involved in uh, uh, you know a number of other uh, uh, groups and organizations, uh, Rotary and Spiritway, to sort of name a few. So, really, has been uh, a very active uh, individual um, in his stay in this community. And I think that uh, you know, so congratulations for Fred and, and uh, for him committing his time and effort and passion uh, to make the city of Thompson uh, that much of a better place to be but uh, you know I'd like to sort of extend uh, congratulations to everybody that was nominated and any individual that volunteers because I think that uh, as mentioned last week is that I that really to me is uh, sort of uh, defines us as a community and I mean obviously the the more volunteers that we have participating in the community makes uh, us as a community a better place and and it uh, provides a better quality of life for everybody living in this community. 204-677-8181. Now, we will take some questions before we go, but before we do go, I'll give you the final minute to wrap things up for the week ahead. Sure. I mean, just a, a couple of things. I mean, obviously, is that uh, uh, over the last uh, little while, we've been experiencing uh, certain issues in our sanitary system, and I just sort of like to get out a, a public message to, uh, to individuals. And uh, we have in the past sort of sent out... Uh, uh, flyers to uh, to residents, uh, sort of uh, r reminding them that uh, uh, to please uh, don't deposit uh, fats, oils, and greases uh, down the drain. Because I mean, obviously, it uh, does have a negative impact on the uh, uh, on our, our uh, sewage drainage system. But it but it also would have a ne negative impact on individuals' uh, uh, service lines. B but as well, I mean, obviously, that we are experiencing certain issues in uh, in our industrial area as well. Uh, so we'll be in undertaking sort of a process as, as public education process as well as as to getting information out to uh, uh, to organizations and businesses in our in our industrial area to to really is to uh, to ensure that uh, certain products like oil and rags and, and and that type of debris are deposited in uh, in waste as opposed to being deposited in our in our sanitary sewer system. And that will do it for City Beat this week. Make sure to tune in every Thursday at 11.30 for more insight into your city and another chance to ask questions. I would just like to thank City Manager Gary Sapatelli for coming in today once again. And to everyone else, have a great rest of your Thursday. City Beat will be back next Thursday.